for funding Planned Parenthood. I'd take that to zero. I am. <clears throat> I'm not for funding uh, on, public oh, broadcasting. We're on drugs. We're on drugs. I know, but I'm just pointing out that how small the federal war on drug money is in terms of the entire budget, but I am for reducing it because we've got to reduce nearly everything that's generally funded in order to get to a balanced budget. All right. Governor uh, Johnson, the war on drugs. 90% of the drug problem is prohibition related, not use related, and that is not to discount the problems with use and abuse, but that should be the focus. So let's legalize marijuana now. And right now in this country, we are at a tipping point on this issue. 50% of Americans now support legalizing marijuana. Why is this the case? It's because we're talking about it. It's because debates and discussions are raging at dinner tables that haven't been raging at dinner tables in the past. So let's regulate it. Let's tax it. It's on the ballot in Colorado in November. Coloradans have the opportunity here really to change drug policy worldwide. Coloradans get it. Citizens of Denver six years ago voted to decriminalize marijuana on a campaign based on marijuana being safer than alcohol. I am not a hypocrite on this issue. I have drank alcohol, I've smoked marijuana. I don't drink alcohol, I don't smoke marijuana, but I can tell you categorically, in no category is marijuana more dangerous than alcohol. And yet, And yet we are arresting 1.8 million people a year in this country on drug-related crime. We have the highest incarceration rate of any country in the world, 2.3 million people. Half of what we spend on law enforcement, the courts, and the prisons is drug-related, and to what end? Look, this is not about advocating drug use. 50% of kids graduating from high school have smoked marijuana. That's an issue that belongs with families, not in the criminal justice system. All right, thank you, Governor. That's time up. Jill, you're. Does you're, anybody you're, have any rebuttals? Go ahead, Jill. Uh, I, I have to make my statement okay. first, and then, and then the rebuttal. Thank you. Um, so, as a medical doctor, uh, previously in clinical practice for about 25 years, I can say with a real understanding of the science and the health impacts that marijuana is a substance that is dangerous because it's illegal. It's not illegal on account of being dangerous because it's not dangerous at all. It is well understood that the health impacts of marijuana are mainly the public health and safety impacts from the illegal drug trade associated with marijuana prohibition. So the most important thing we can do to get rid of the health problems associated with marijuana is to legalize it. And on day one, on day one, a president, if she wanted to, could instruct the DEA to do a really radical, radical thing. And that would be to use science in determining what substances will and will not be scheduled. Because the minute science is used, marijuana is off the schedule. And the same goes, the same goes for hemp, which is also a substance for which there are no bad drug effects. There are no bad health and safety effects. Yet there are very important economic benefits. Both of those substances should be legalized. Marijuana should be uh, regulated, but in a way that does not create another tobacco monopoly, okay. but permits small businesses right, to actually flourish. Now, if anyone wants to rebut, raise your hand. Do you want to rebut, Rocky? Yes. And I'm not sure it's a real rebuttal because I'm in total agreement, especially, well, on all issues that 
Jill raised, but hemp, really? Why is that illegal? Except for those moneyed interests that control our Congress? We need to rise up as one and say, legalize industrial hemp now. Okay, anyone want to rebut? No. My time is not okay. there, I don't, think. I, I don't mean to quibble like okay. the President and Romney do. That's one minute. 40,000 people, less than 40,000 people in prison on drug charges in 1971 when this war on drugs began. Now we have over a half million of our people in prisons. I would entertain as president a presidential pardon for everyone that didn't commit other crimes that's in our federal prisons okay. because of drug offenses. Anyone want to rebut? Remember, we have, we have six questions in all. We're only finishing the second one. Anyone else want to rebut? When I was governor of New Mexico, I met with judges in Portland, Oregon that asked to meet with me. Um, they, we, the meeting started. I didn't know what to expect, but what they said was, hey, we're here to support you. We're here to support what you have to say, but we would like to share with you a story here that perhaps you can pass, only have on, a minute to pass on to others that would let others better understand this. They said that uh, methamphetamine really is the boogeyman drug. People that use methamphetamine uh, do bad things. Their behavior is altered. They said, we're not suggesting, and by the way, it disparagingly falls on the poor. It's, it's the best example we can think of of a prohibition drug. It's cheap, it's easy to make, so the consequences fall disparagingly on the poor. They said, we're not suggesting the following, but if cocaine were legal, these people would be using cocaine without the negative behavioral impact. Now, what I will tell you about cocaine, and it would be wonderful if the government told the truth, cocaine puts holes in your heart. Really, people that use cocaine their entire lives time, die Garrett. from a heart attack. Whitney Houston is the best example right, of somebody Garrett, who of time. uses cocaine Gary. all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, One minute rebuttal. Go ahead, Virgil. Right. <laughs> Let's be clear about my position on this. Unlike Gary, unlike Rocky, and unlike Jill, I'm not for legalizing drugs. If you want that, vote for one of them. Don't vote for me. Okay, now, well said. Uh, we remind you that tonight's debate questions were submitted via social media, and I'm presenting them exactly as they were received. The next topic, and we'll start with this one with Virgil, uh, concerns foreign policy. It comes from Greg Salazar of Los Angeles via Reddit. Do you think that an annual military budget of nearly $1 trillion is absolutely necessary to keep us safe? And in a broader sense, what do you think should be the role worldwide of the United States military? Two minutes, Virgil Good. As I said, if I'm elected president, I'll balance the budget and part of the cuts have to be in the Department of Defense. We cannot do, as Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan suggest, increase military funding by $2 trillion over the next uh, decade. I support a strong defense, but we need to retrench rather than trying to be the policeman of the world. We have too many soldiers, too many uh, troopers scattered around the world. Our bases need to be reduced around the world, not increased, and the United States should stop trying to be the overseer of the world. That will save us billions and billions of dollars. All right, Governor Johnson. Let me start with a premise here. We need to provide ourselves with a strong national defense. It's one of government's fundamental responsibilities. But the operative word here is defense, not offense, and not nation building. The biggest threat to our national security is the fact that we're bankrupt, that we're borrowing and we're printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we spend. So I am promising to submit a balanced budget to Congress in the year 2013 that would include a 43% reduction in military spending. How does that go down? Well, a 43% reduction in military spending takes us back to 2003 spending levels. It's getting ourselves out of all the military engagements that we are in currently involved in. Stop with the military interventions. It's reducing the military footprint worldwide, its bases, its, its troops that we have stationed in uh, Japan, in South Korea, and in Europe, its intelligence, its research and development, uh, all of these components go into a 43% reduction 
uh, when it comes to the military. We have to stop our military interventions. We have to stop with the drone strikes. We have to stop with a policy that has us with hundreds of millions of enemies to this country that but for these policies would otherwise not exist. It's a recognition that when we talk about foreign aid to other countries, it's propping up foreign dictators that are on our side as opposed to the other side. We pick winners and losers. And there are a whole lot of unintended consequences that go along with this. Right now, we're, we're funding the Syrian insurgents, and they're made up of jihadists? Five Did seconds. we not learn anything in Afghanistan where we funded Osama bin Laden? All right. Um, discussing military spending, Jill. Yes, I, I want to agree with uh, Gary and... Uh, with Rocky, and, and I guess not with Virgil in this instance, uh, to say that a foreign policy based on militarism and brute military force and wars for oil is making us less secure, not more secure. We need to cut the budget and bring the troops home. And we need to end the drone wars, not bring the drones home, because they're already coming home. We need to put an end to the use of drones and actually lead, not to lead this development of a new arms race, but to lead in an international treaty and a convention to permanently ban the use of drones as a weapon of war and as a means of spying the American public. Five trillion dollars spent on the Afghanistan and Iraq war, thousands of American lives, hundreds of thousands of innocent civilians, this has not made us more secure. Uh, and it, what we're seeing, in fact, is the blowback against this policy. Because dropping bombs on weddings and funerals, which is what drones do with an incredibly high civilian casualty rate, that is not a good way to win the hearts and minds of people in the Middle East. 30 seconds. We need, we need a foreign policy based on international rights on, on international law and on human rights and on fighting climate change, which should be the war that we are all fighting, not this war for oil. All right. And now the, also on the question of uh, military spending, and then we'll have a rebuttal if anyone raises their hand and wants to. Again, we have three more questions coming. On military spending, Rocky. President Eisenhower, in his last presidential address, warned this country about the military-industrial complex. When he first wrote that speech, he termed it the military-industrial-congressional complex for very good reason, because these folks vote for massive funding for completely wasteful projects like F-22 that the Department of Defense said we're never going to use it, it's outmoded. Why would we spend billions of dollars on it? And because the contractor had other contractors or subcontractors in 44 different states, and they do that very strategically, these people, the Republicans and Democrats alike, voted for additional funding. That is treason against our country when our treasure is being wasted, when we need that treasure to go toward education, jobs, and the biggest challenge facing our planet, and that is combating climate change. We need to focus on where the real public interest is rather than where those who are benefiting from this corrupt system are, are, have their stake. Now, there are two fundamentals when it comes to our engagement, military engagement. I think our leaders have completely either forgotten it or ignoring it. No wars of aggression. If you haven't been attacked or you're not imminently to be attacked, it to attack and occupy another country like we did Iraq is an illegal war of aggression under the Kellogg-Briand Pact, under the United Nations Charter against the Nuremberg Principles. At the Nuremberg Tribunal, we prosecuted and convicted people for those same crimes. And secondly, the Constitution requires that the decision whether to go to war is Congress's alone. They have the sole prerogative. It cannot be delegated to the President as right. Congress has so cowardly done 
with the Gulf of Tonkin resolution and later okay, the resolution out of time. for right. the use of force against the Anyone want to rebut? Nations. You want to rebut uh, Virgil? Very briefly. Rocky is correct about following the Constitution. I would not be in Syria unless Congress makes a